So I'm nearly finished with my Hawk grind. This is the new British battleship at tier eight, this battle cruiser line. And I wanted to share with you these amazing experiences because honestly, the Hawk has been so much fun to play. And I really do think that this is an amazing line for any battleship player to go up because that happens quite often, okay? This is a very consistent line. I've been saying that a lot about these British battleships and I talk a lot about how battleships are much more interesting to play when they're more consistent. And I tend to get frustrated when those battleships aren't particularly consistent. Well, the Hawk has been amazing. There's obviously some downsides to this ship that we'll talk about, but my goodness, the guns are so good here. Like, Freddy at 15 kilometers takes 26K. <laughs> I'd be happy with that salvo out of a Montana, a Vermont even. And yeah, a tier eight with nine guns. <laughs> So this is a really, really good ship. You, I do think that you're gonna want to grind out this line if you enjoy battleship play. It's really interesting to have this concealment. It's very cool to have the speed. You'll notice we're also taking brisk. So we have a very accurate flanking battleship here. And yes, that is three salvos into this match and we have 75,000 damage. I don't know if I've ever had three salvos that are that good in a row before. <laughs> Uh, I'm very excited to get up to the tier 9 and tier 10 on this line, I can tell you that. I haven't played them too much, only a little bit on the press account when they were earlier in release, or early access, I guess. But I'm very, very excited because this Hawk especially has been amazing. The downside to this ship, of course, is the armor, and we'll look at that in the armor viewer later. But just know, if this ship goes, goes broadside, it's going to take citadels. It's a massive box. And it doesn't have a lot of armor either. It's about the armor level of a North Carolina, just with the Citadel way out of the water. So you do need to make use of this concealment. The bow and the stern are also overmatchable by most battleships at this tier. So it has a lot of HP, but it can also chip through that HP relatively quickly. So I've noticed that I need to play around this concealment line. You'll notice the enemy ships tend to be just outside of my concealment, my standard detection. And I like playing like that, so I can go dark, I can get undetected whenever I want to, and that allows me to stay alive a little bit longer. The heal does come up a little bit quicker than usual, I think it's around a 60 second cooldown, which is nice, but no super heal yet. That's what the tier nine and the tier 10 get. So then you really don't have to worry about things like fires, for example, once you get to those tiers. Here we're still a little concerned, so I have my build a little bit trying to deal with some of those fires. Although I'm trying not to take sustained fire, I'm trying to get into positions and engagements where I don't actually have to be under a sustained threat, basically. Unfortunately, I whiff my salvo into this island here, so we do miss out on 100k in the first five minutes of this game. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> it's still a pretty good start. This is arms race, keep that in mind, but I think those three salvos were so early that we didn't even get much value out of the buffs that our team had gotten for us. So that's kind of interesting that this probably could have happened in a standard game as well. Certainly the dispersion isn't always going to cooperate, but I've found that it's more consistent. On average, I'm going to hit more shells more accurately than other battleships at the same tier, which is really, really nice. This sequence of events here against this poor Nagato is just gonna show you exactly that, the consistency here. And again, this is a bit of a one-off game, one of the reasons why I'm starting with this one, showing you this match is just how insane the extreme highs can be. And even at its lows, the Hawk isn't even bad. I'll show you some clips of the HE being extremely deadly as well. That's the great thing about this line is you can use the AP to just absolutely punish people for going broadside. At lower tiers, of course, you can overmatch a lot of the ships there as well. And as soon as you get into higher tier games, suddenly you become a mainline British battleship where you're spamming HE, getting witherers, getting arsonists, and it's pretty amazing. I don't know. This seems like the line that kind of has it all. Yeah, that's just Citadel after Citadel after Citadel into that Nagato. I don't know how the consistency was that good in this match, but 
I'll tell you, this was a really, really fun one to play. And the whole grind for the Hawk has been relatively easy, I would say. Pretty stress-free. Maybe it's because of differences in my mindset, but I tend to find Tier 8 to be a bit of a frustrating place to play sometimes, just because of the up tiers being so extreme, and then you can get into down tiers or double CV games, which I've had a couple in this ship already, and those certainly weren't the most enjoyable. But I did really find that the guns I could count on. And that can always carry me through a bit of a tough matchmaker situation. Whereas if I'm playing something, I don't know, like a Bismarck, <laughs> I'm sorry to pick on uh, German battleships all the time, but inaccurate guns that don't have overmatch, they're not very good HE, and uh, you're relying on brawling, well, that's going to be tough into tier 10 games. But the HE here, it's amazing. A Vladivostok goes bow in, and we're going to hit him extremely hard, getting a couple fires, and I don't think it's this salvo, but the next salvo, the alpha damage is just a little bit absurd. And look at this position I'm in on this map. This is not a position you can always take in a battleship, but since we're so quick and have decent concealment, we can actually get to some very interesting positions in the Hawk. Of course, we do have to be concerned about our lack of armor, so notice the angle I'm taking. I'm never wanting to go exactly bow into these battleships that can overmatch me. I'm trying to present my broadside in a way that they're going to shoot it, but not be able to pen into my citadel. Uh, yeah, that is, that is basically a 10,000 damage salvo <laughs> into a Russian battleship bow on. So very accurate to be able to hit that portion of the ship. And just because we have relatively poor armor doesn't mean we can't lead a bit of a push through the enemy team. There's not a lot going on here. The enemy team is kiting away. The Marlboro is certainly not the best battleship in the world. But we're going to push through here, right? There's a Cleveland on our team who's in a bit of a troublesome spot, so we can push up here. And I want you to notice that even if we play with our rudder, play with our speed a little bit, we can throw off a lot of the enemy's salvos. And even though our armor isn't the best in the world, it's good enough if we angle it properly. So it's not like these are just backline camper ships that fold the instant they take a few hits. I think that this line is going to be quite tricky to play and maximize. But if you're new, play a little bit more passive, don't take the risks like I'm playing. Try and play around your teammates a little bit more. Don't lead those pushes, and you're still going to have a really good time. But to really maximize the ship, I think you want to be playing in that 12 to 15 kilometer range, playing around its concealment. It's a lot of fun, and I've really enjoyed my time with it, if you can't tell. And I really think that a lot of you are going to enjoy this line. We'll see what happens once I get myself up to the tier 9. I'm looking forward to getting the super heal, although... I do know the tier 9 also has a massive citadel. <laughs> and as we've looked at previously, suddenly we're getting into super ship games, which I'm not as huge a fan of. But this game, of course, went pretty well, and we were up against some tier 10s. So it's not like this ship is unable to do anything into these tier 10 battles, which is always nice. As for the commander build, I'm still sticking with this basic tank build with Brisk. I do think Grease the Gears could be useful here since the turrets aren't the quickest, but we definitely want Gun Feeder since both our AP and our HE are so good. Brisk is awesome considering the concealment and the speed we already get. We want to be flanking, of course, with this ship. But once I do get up to that super heal, I think there's an argument to be made for some of these suggested builds. Not necessarily Furious, although if you want to try it, be my guest, it can be fun. Uh, but super heavy AP, of course the downside here to the increased damage, is the fire duration. But as soon as you get a super heal, where you're healing back 100% of that fire damage, it's not as big a deal. And I can see it even working on the Hawk as well, but for me personally, I do want to wait for that super heal. So I'll wait till tier 9 to potentially use that. But I think a standard build is always going to be good on these battleships, since they are just so good in that normal battleship role, trying to use concealment, making sure the guns are as accurate as possible. And you can see from the results, they're really, really fun to use because of that consistency. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of this line as a whole in the comments down below. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. So yeah, I forgot about the armor. <laughs> 
Uh, it looks like this. I wasn't lying. It's really, really bad. 25 millimeters. 32 is all right. I mean, there's a lot of 32 mil overmatch as we're getting into higher tiers these days. But at least at tier 8, it's decent. Uh, but this is the real big issue here. Uh, yeah, that is your Citadel. So you definitely need to be angling in this ship. And it's only 305 millimeters, which is not very much, especially at this tier. A lot of cruisers start to go through that even. Um, and given the overmatch ability of the front here, I mean, just don't don't go bow in, guys. Don't go bow in. You have to angle something like this. You have to try and bait them into hitting this and then use your rudder to turn in and angle it a little more so it auto bounces. That's gonna be your best bet at closer ranges. At longer ranges, you can just kind of sit angled like this and the 32 should carry you through, but not the best armor. That's really the weakness here. Other than that, this ship's insane. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.